I'm going to show you how to create new indicators with ProRealTime. ProRealTime uses a very simple basic-like language that's easy to learn even if you've never programmed before. The code editor itself has several functions to help you learn to program, such as automatic error detection, color coding of the functions, and an integrated function library. You can also view the programming help manual by going to help manuals here and choosing indicator programming. This manual is illustrated with many examples to show you how to program your own indicators. Here is an example that reprograms the Bollinger Bands in just nine lines. Let's do another example. I'm going to click on this button to open the indicators and trading systems window. Then I click here to create a new indicator. I'm going to call this my MACD because we're going to reprogram the MACD in a few simple steps. First, I'm going to define the variables. I enter this symbol to signify a comment. The first variable is going to be an exponential average because the MACD is the difference between two exponential averages. I enter A equals and then I'm going to use this button to insert a function. Several categories are available such as constants, operators, keywords, mathematic functions, time functions, Pro real time indicators and user indicators, which are indicators you have programmed. I'm going to select Pro real time indicators and go down to exponential average. I select this and click add. My exponential average is directly added to my program. I'm going to add a second exponential average now by doing the same thing. The first exponential average in an MACD typically uses 12 periods. The second one typically uses 26 periods. I simply change the number of periods shown in pink here to 12 and 26. You could also set these to other amounts. Now to calculate the difference between these two moving averages, I'm going to simply enter C equals A minus B. Then I'm going to enter return C. The return function will display C on the chart. I'm also going to enter a comment here that this is the calculation of the MACD. Let's see what this looks like on the chart. To do this, click add indicator to chart. My MACD is shown here. Now we can complete this indicator. To do that, I'm going to click on the little wrench of my indicator. Click Modify Indicator. To add the signal, I bring my cursor back here. I'm going to enter a comment calculation of the signal. And the signal is also an exponential moving average. So I'm just going to actually Copy this code right here. Copy that with Control C, or you can actually use the uh, copy function right here. I'm going to place my cursor where I want to paste the code, and I'm going to click here to paste. The signal usually uses nine periods, and it's going to be applied to the variable C instead of the MACD. Now I'm going to give a name to C. I'm going to say return C as MACD and D as signal. Put the names between quotes and separate with a comma. When I'm done, I click add indicator to chart. As you can see here, I now have the MACD line and the signal line, and also a color zone here. I'm going to actually remove the color zone for now, and then give a color to my MACD. For example, blue, 
and a color to my signal line, for example, red. To continue modifying our indicator, I'm going to click on my MACD here to bring us back to the settings of the main indicator, and then click Modify Indicator here. We just have one more thing to add, which is the histogram of the MACD. To do that, I'm going to go here, enter the comment histogram of the MACD, and enter E equals C minus D. Then I'm going to add the histogram to my return line here, E as histogram. I'm finished with the program now, so I'm going to click here to add the indicator to the chart. I'm now going to set the style for the histogram chart. I'm going to set a green color. I'm going to set the style as a histogram. I'm going to unlink the color for positive and negative histogram. And I'm going to insert red as the color for the negative histogram. Finally, I can go back to my MACD and set the default configuration for this indicator. When we compare the MACD to my MACD, we notice the same results. The only remaining differences are the zero line shown here and the color zone on the default MACD. Let's see how to do this on our program. We go back to the settings of my MACD, click on MACD for example, and click Add Color Zone. Line 1 is the MACD. Line 2, we can define the signal for example. And so now we have a color zone between the MACD line and the signal as in the default indicator. Let's also go in and modify the indicator to add the zero line. We can define here F equals zero, F as zero. Click Add Indicator to Chart, and now we also have a zero line added to our indicator just like the default indicator. To learn more, click on one of the links that appears on the screen.